What's going on, everybody? It's Mr. Gus, and I'm back in the physics classroom. And today I'm with Patrick the Piggy here, and we're doing some cool challenge lab, okay? So, what I have here is a, a little flying pig, and he's adorable. He's got batteries in him. I can turn the switch on, and he starts flapping his little wings, flying around. He's attached to the ceiling. Maybe you can see he's attached up there, but he's flapping around. One cool thing about Patrick uh, is that when I give him a little shove in the right direction, his wings flap, and he starts, actually, this is the backwards. If I give him the right direction, his little wings start flapping real hard, and you can see he starts going in a circle. He'll keep going in this circle, flying around and around and around for quite a while. And it's actually, his radius is getting kind of large. It's getting bigger than it was at one point. In fact, it might be getting so big, it's almost going to hit my projector. And I'm just actually clearing it by, by just a little bit. So you see him flapping his wings around, OK? And I'm going to give you a challenge. Now, with Patrick the Piggy here, we can take some data. There's some things happening. We've not, we've not seen this kind of circle necessarily before but I'm going to give you a challenge, okay? So uh, the challenge here is going to be to collect the necessary data in order to determine uh, the tension in the string. There's a string holding Patrick to the ceiling, and I want to know how much tension there is. So I'm going to go ahead and catch Patrick right here, save him from his, his little journey. He's probably tired. He's been flapping his wings quite a bit. Uh, let's come over here. And let's go ahead and quickly sketch a model of what Patrick was doing. So first, our challenge is to uh, determine the force of tension uh, in the string while Patrick, the pig, moving in a circle. Okay, so if I think about Patrick, here's Patrick, here's that circular path he moves on. So the path, uh, the circular path of this object of Patrick is kind of horizontal. It's a horizontal circle and the forces that act on him, well there's his weight force pulling him down, there's this ceiling up here with a string attached to it, so there's obviously a tension force also acting up the string. Now, neither of these forces are pointed exactly or totally radially inward, but we can see that the force of tension has a component of tension pointed radially inward. We can call that Ft in the x direction which means there's also a component in the y direction, FTY, holding up Patrick the pig, okay? And like any good FBD, we should go ahead and write an F net expression. So I see two directions at play here. I see my vertical direction and I see my horizontal direction. So let's go ahead and say FTY, that's equal to, I'm sorry, F net Y is equal to FTY, minus Fg. They're in opposite directions. They're equal to Ma, like any good uh, net force equation is. But in this case, Patrick is not accelerating up and down. Even right now, he's held stationary vertically. He was held stationary vertically once we achieved that kind of repeating circles. So this is zero. There is no acceleration, which means Fty and Fg, I'm going to throw congruency marks on my model here because they are balanced. These forces are not causing acceleration. Now, Patrick is also moving in a circle. He is moving horizontally, but he's not covering any distance. It's the same displacement, just moving in a constant circle. So it's not so much FTX as much as it is F centripetal. There's a centripetal force acting on Patrick towards the middle. What force is that? Well, there's only one force acting radially inward, and that's FTX. And so like any good equation, F net equation, it needs to be equal to MA. Centripetal forces are not just ma, they're m times my tangential speed squared over r. So I have two equations. And my job here is to figure out what I need to measure in order to find the tension force in my, or on Patrick. What, how much force is acting in the tension while he moves 
in this circle. So there's a couple things I probably need to measure right off the bat. And I can see this, right? I've got two ways to do this, I think. Um, one way to measure tension would be to go ahead and say FTY is equal to MG. And once I find the angle that I'm going to use in my, uh, in my model or from my model, I can probably go ahead and do that. So let's just pick an angle. I want to say, let's go with the, uh, the vertical angle. The angle between the string and the vertical or the normal, we'll call that theta just for our purposes. Okay? So this is theta, then FTY is cosine. Ft cosine of that angle is equal to mg. Well, this is my first method. I can go ahead and find the tension in this string as long as I know the angle between the vertical and the string and I know the mass in g. So if I start thinking about things I need to know or things that I should measure, uh, data to measure, well, one thing I should measure is probably mass. That's on a balance or a scale. Something else would be theta. I guess that's a protractor? We'll talk more about that later. Protractor. All right. What else can I measure? What else, or how else can I do this? I have one method as long as I know theta and mass, I should be able to find uh, my, my tension force. The other method that I could use to improve my accuracy uh, or, or validate my answer would be here. And so FTX in this case would be sine. I would say FT sine of theta is equal to M times V squared over R. And if I think about V squared, I don't necessarily have like a velocity measure or speed measure for my centripetal uh, speed. So I got to think about what is velocity or tangential speed. That's 2 pi r over period. So I think about some things that I might need to measure. This would be m times uh, 2 pi r over period squared over radius. If I think about some things I need to measure to find tension, again, it would be angle. It would be mass. And again, in this case, I'd also need to find the period of a revolution and the radius of that revolution. So this looks like a second method that I could use right here. Um, and so let's add these variables over to the things I might measure. I already said mass and theta. That's one thing. Something else I might measure is period and radius to help me find speed. So let's include these things. If I can find period with a stopwatch, that would be useful. And something else I might measure is radius. And I would use a meter scale. So if I'm going, if, if I'm listing out materials I would need in some kind of question, I would be sure that I'm listing out these variables, and those are the materials I will need in order to find these variables to solve the equations that match my force model to find tension force. Now I want to show you something. Just because these are tools I can use to find uh, theta and find radius, they may not be the most effective or most accurate. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to grab for us a meter stick and a protractor, and I will show you why this might not be the best move for us, okay? Let's put Patrick back in motion now that I have my tools. I've got my protractor. I've got my meter stick. Let's go ahead and put Patrick back in motion and try to measure some of these things. Mass, that's easy. I've got balances around the room. Uh, stopwatch, no problem. Let it go 10 laps, measure that, no problem. Let's try to figure out though, like, can I actually measure radius? Check it out. Let's put Patrick back in orbit. We'll get him going the right way. All right. Now that Patrick is going, I need to measure the radius of his trip, which means I probably need to stand. This is scary. I probably need to stand somewhere underneath the middle of this thing with my meter stick in the right direction and like figure out where it keeps going. This doesn't feel accurate. It seems dangerous and it doesn't seem accurate. I hope you're at home going like, what's this crazy man doing? Because it is weird. I can't get hit by it, but also like I got to figure out 
Well, it, this is totally inaccurate. This is totally not reasonable, not accurate. So radius is a weird thing to measure. I might not be able to measure radius, so I might need to find a different way to get radius, okay? Likewise, let's try and get angle. If I want to measure the angle of this thing, I'm going to have to, like, get up on a stool before Patrick hits me and try to, like, get my... This is ridiculous. Do you see what I'm saying? It's really impossible to do these things. So both of these measurements are not measurements we want to take because, number one, they might be dangerous because Patrick hit us. Number two, they're not going to be accurate. I'm going to be guessing because it's going to be just throwing something up there. So let's talk about how I might be able to use triangle trigonometry uh, to figure this out, or triangle geometry to figure this out. Come down back. That's enough, Patrick. Okay. So instead of measuring uh, theta with the protractor, this is no good. Instead, let's think about a triangle, OK? If I have my triangle, this is Patrick's triangle, where this is the theta we're talking about. This is a right angle here. This is my string. This is my radius. What are some ways? You can pause and brainstorm and think about this, but let's think about ways that I might be able to find theta and radius more effectively. And check it out. I can easily stop Patrick and dangle it right here. I can easily stop him, hold him steady, and take some measurements. So uh, go ahead and pause it and brainstorm if you want, or keep paying attention, and we'll talk through it. The first thing that I notice is that like, I can take the length of that string pretty easily. So when I think about my triangle, I can figure this out real easily. I can figure out length easily with a meter stick. So instead of exactly a protractor, I might get my length, OK? Let's add that. I can easily get length. Let's cross these things out. I can't measure those, but I can measure length with a meter stick. And while radius is really hard to measure while Patrick is in motion, one thing that's really easy to measure while Patrick is in motion is how high or how far from the ceiling Patrick is moving while in a circle with a meter stick. So this is a much easier measurement. I can actually keep out of the way of Patrick if I put zero towards the top. Once he gets flying, I can quite easily put my meter stick right in the way. Oops, we nicked him. So by being very careful, I can quite easily let him get back in motion once he speeds up. But I can pretty easily hold my meter stick up and get me and a friend to, realize, to see and measure he's flying at about 90 centimeters. No, like pretty darn close, like 90 centimeters away from the ceiling, OK? That is a much safer, much easier, much more accurate measurement than, say, just trying to measure radius alone. So now that I've measured two different sides of my triangle, length, and we can call this one height, I can go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem to find the radius. And I can go ahead and use the cosine function to find my angle. So do I need radius in theta? You betcha. Can I measure those things? Not very accurately. So I want to measure length, and I want to measure height. Also with that same meter stick. From these two things, I can use cosine of theta to find, I'm sorry, I can use uh, height over length equals cosine of theta to find theta. And I can go ahead and use Pythag find radius. Those are calculations, they're not measurements, but they're kind of some geometry tricks that I can use to go ahead and do this. Okay? So, this is our setup. I'm going to give you some data to allow you, if you're at home trying to solve this problem, to go ahead and solve this problem yourself. Now, you can already take uh, period data because you've watched this thing fly in circles. You just watch it, you time it, you find the period. Okay, uh, let's go ahead ourselves and actually take data.
data now. So I'll get the mass of Patrick here, and I'll get the length and the height. So I already told you that the, uh, the height is 90 centimeters when Patrick is in full motion. The length of this string is 100 and uh, let's go 105. It is 105 centimeters. You're going to want to convert those over into meters. Okay? You can find the period using our video uh, that is in, you're watching right now. And then I'm going to unhook Patrick and take you over to our scale in the classroom or our balance in the classroom, and we'll find the mass together. This mass is going to be in grams, so make sure you convert it over into kilograms because we're talking about forces, and forces need to be measured in kilograms. My scale has turned off on me, so I'm going to turn it back on. And once it turns on and calibrates itself, we're going to wait here. Now we're just waiting. This is the magic of science. Here we go. Now it's on. Let's go ahead and check it out. I'll let you see for yourself. It comes out to be uh, 157.7. 157.7, that's in grams, but let's convert it over into kilograms so uh, we can find force because I'm asking you to find force. Okay? And so with those, two me with those three measurements, with the length measurement, the height measurement, the period measurement, and the mass measurement of 157.7, grams, not kilograms, you should be able to find the tension in the string two different ways. The first way, using tension in the y direction. This one's very straightforward, hopefully. And using tension in the x direction and your understanding of circular motion. Both of these methods will both get us tension. Let's challenge ourselves. Let's see how close both of those calculations get to finding tension. This is your challenge, okay? If you got questions, drop them in the comments. Ask me in class. Otherwise, until next time, see ya!